What's up guys, this is your boy Jason right here and um, today we're actually going to go more in depth in the camera movement within After Effects. It's not about actually movement, I'm going to give you some uh, tips and tricks that you might want to consider being aware of. Uh, if you haven't seen the last tutorial, I did one uh, some days ago, I just actually recorded about five minutes ago, but uh, it's going to get um, uh, uploaded on different days. So. If you haven't seen that one and if you're new to this then you better check out the last video if you are already a little bit experienced with the camera and all of that and if you might even have a slight idea about photography and all that then just stay focused i'm not going to go too in depth because uh, that would maybe take me hours but definitely more in depth than the beginners tutorial and uh yeah let's just, just go straight into it now last time i actually went over the movement and parenting uh, a camera with a dolly um, also, uh, I did talk a little bit about the DOF, but not too, uh, not, not too much, actually. So, uh, in this one I'm actually going to go over uh, the depth of field a little bit more. Um, and about several other tips that you might want to be aware of when working with the After Effects um, camera. Also, some tips that you might... Uh, that might be really handful that you uh, might use uh, in your workflow to just get things uh, a little bit more uh, more set and more structurized, I guess. So without further ado, let's actually just get straight into that. Now I'm just gonna set up um, a nice angle for us so that we actually have a lot to see according to uh, the depth of field because this is what I'm going to go over now for the next two or three minutes, I guess. So let me actually play on the rotation right here because I want to have a nice angle just like that I guess um, let me actually play a little bit with the rotation of the environment because uh, got a little bit too less light for my I think there's a little bit too less light going on right here or actually let me just uh, quickly set up a light this is this was actually not planned to be part of the tutorial anyways but you see how fast things can go sometimes. Now here we go. Um, this isn't too much, but we do see the upper part of the headphones now at least. So um, yeah, when when playing or using when actually tweaking your DOF settings, you always want to be aware of your render time. You don't want to go too ham unless you got uh, four Titan Z with SLI in your PC. You got a I don't know um, Ultra i7 core fifth generation. 8 core, I don't know what processor, and uh, even if you're running on a toaster, just always try to be aware of uh, the render time in combination with your After Effects might be in a bitch and crashing, because that happens way too often. I think most of us should know that. So um, let's actually just uh, enable the depth of field for now. And uh, yeah, we're going to see that this is definitely not our focus point. Um, I think. It's completely not focused, so let me just um, go with the focus distance a little bit less. Because I think now that we are actually, this is a close-up take, so uh, I'm pretty sure that the focus distance, I'll have to set it lower to actually get some focusing going on. And there we go. I knew it. All right. Now, uh, for this, I'm just going to leave it like that. We have this more or less focused. Um, this is not focused as well, but it's more or less this region about here. Um, so with the aperture, or uh, as others might call it, the f-stop that we got right here. Uh, by the way, I just opened up these camera settings uh, by clicking, by holding down Control, Shift, and Y. You can uh, also do this for solids when you might want to recolor a solid. Just Control, Shift, Y gives you your um, just your layer settings more or less. So um, for the f-stop, uh, I don't want to explain this. If you do want to get into that, actually Google it because I'm not too sure. But if you um, if you decrease the f-stop, then you're actually going to get more blur. And if you increase the f-stop, yeah, if you increase the f-stop, uh, you're actually going to get less blur. This has to do with the light um, and how much light the camera or the lens actually allows uh, to get into. Yeah, basically get the depth of field going on. So um, 
in here this would just be the aperture and um, I like to actually uh, keep the f-stop values in mind because that's a little bit easier you just go with uh, a plain number and not with the pixel this and that because all those pixel values might confuse you over time especially when you do in a hard um, when you're going into a really really hard or let's say advanced comp and you do a lot of 3d things you got a plenty of cameras going on uh, thousands of angles and I don't know how much keyframes all of those pixel values might sometimes um, Let you lose off track So I'm just gonna let the f stop to about 2.6 just for there. Uh, we got some nice blur going on right there um, So yeah, keep this in mind f stop decreasing more blur up uh, increasing less blur Mm, and this is definitely independent from your focus distance and from the blur level You could also just easily increase the blur level, but the f-stop is basically built in to uh, The camera and it's more or less I would say a natural way of your depth of, of increasing or decreasing or in any way tweaking your depth of field and the blur level would just uh, go overboard and um, Yeah, just just to more or less override it on a on a, on a completely CGI level. The f-stop is basically what you also have on cameras in the real life. Uh, some of y'all, as I said, are into photography, you might know. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. And there we go. Now what, what, now, what I could also do, if I do want to play with my focus distance and not um, have to sort of guess, because that's what I just did to have it focused around here, is I could set up a new null object, and this is pretty important, or actually just pretty handful, I would say, and call it the DOF, uh, let's just call it the DOF controller for that, make it a 3D um, layer, that's always pretty important. And let me, uh, I don't know, take a lot of label color just so I know what it is. Also in here, um, I got my dolly going on there and my DOF there, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it like that. Go on the camera, AA, as said before, uh, and the focus distance, I could uh, Alt and click... Um, alt and click the stopwatch to, give the, to get us the expression going on. And... Wait, I would have to... Oh no, there's an easy way. Forget that. Uh, my bad. Let's actually take this out. So we got no expression going on right there. Um, you would actually highlight this camera and highlight your null object, which in my case is the DOF controller. Right click uh, one of those on the camera and say link focus distance to layer. And with this set you'll see that our depth of field that basically the headphones are no longer blurred here that they're somewhere blurred about um there let me actually zoom into this uh this should, is more or less the region that's blur is focused the rest is all blurred but now the the thing about the dof controller is that i can easily uh play with the position values just like that and you'll see that uh, wherever I got my dolly is going to get focused. So right now, as I said it more or less to here, um, this is being focused, this is not, and we don't even have to, we obviously see that this is completely blurred out. Um, another thing that is pretty useful within uh, Element 3D is that you can, if you're not sure where actually a certain point is, if you got a 3D model going on right here, you can go into your utilities, and on to, yeah, no, on the generate 3D position, you could easily uh, select the 2D position that you see, uh, just like that. So let's just basically take this little, um, yeah, let's take that little thingy, I guess, and orient the surface and create a 3D null. Click on generate, and it's going to give us actually a null object parented, or yeah, more or less parented to this point that we just selected. Um, right here. So with that, I could just, I could ra I could either take the position values and copy it for my DOF, or I could even go to uh, highlight this with the camera and link uh, the focus distance to the new null object that uh, Element uh, 3D has created for us. Uh, so I could do that or I just um, I'm just gonna take the position values uh, like that I'm gonna highlight that so it gives us this position in more or less gray copy just straight away uh, 
straight away uh, control and C, go onto our DALI, or actually no, onto, onto the DOF controller, P for position, and paste it. I can now delete that one, as, and as you'll see, this is going to get blurred out. This is completely, not completely, but this is also blurred, and the only part focused right here, let me put this on the full resolution, is this little corner, more or less, and what is uh, surrounded by that. So with that, um, having two things that you might um, use to tips or tricks, whatever, for your uh, camera after, for your After Effects camera. One last thing is definitely the 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 type of um, DOF. That means that we're not gonna we're not gonna tweak the distance. We're not gonna tweak the um, the amount. We're just gonna t tweak the way. Um, and by opening up your camera options, uh, AA on your keyboard, as said before, um, we might want to focus on this bit right here a little bit more. So we got, uh, we care, we more or less uh, took care of all these, got our blur level, this, th those four are actually set. Now let's go down here. And for these, uh, I don't know what they are, eight values. There's always, you would always want to be careful with those. Iris shape. Now this is basically giving you the, let's say, the beauty of depth of field that you got going on right in your scene. Because the fast rectangle that I got selected right now for um, is more or less like a fast blur that you would have in your effects and presets. It's easy, it's, it's set and pretty fast. It's definitely the fast one, the fastest one to render out. But it's, it's not looking too good, and it's hard to explain, but you'll just see what I mean by that. Let me actually do a screenshot of that. And uh, let's actually set this onto hexagon. I'm not going to go too in-depth, because my PC isn't the best and I'm recording, so I'm just going to take the hexagon one. Hope that it would not crash. No, it didn't. And... Um, it's hard to tell, especially on YouTube. YouTube's gonna screw up the quality anyways. But this is more or less your your quality of the depth of field. Now you could also play with the iris rotation, roundness, all of that. Also the aspect ratio, depending on how you want your depth of fields to uh, to see, if, uh, to look, if you actually want it to be um, just straight, whatever shape you got going on. Um, with the aspect ratio, you could um, get your... Let me actually tr try to demonstrate. Let me get the spec ratio like that. It's hard to tell, uh, especially because YouTube screws up the, the quality. I, myself, see a difference, but you might hardly be able to tell. And um, so I'm not going to go over this too much. I'm going to leave it on hexagon for now. And within our element 3D, there's also one more thing that you might uh, risk a look at, which is in the render settings on the depth of field. We got uh, several... DOF modes. Uh, we got the preview blur, which is um, obviously like the fast rectangle that we had in our built-in camera. Got continuous blur, the pixel blur, which is basically the normal. This is always set to pixel blur. We got multi-pass and the focus indicator, which is just uh, tell us where what is, just like that. Now you can see that this is basically being focused um, and this is not. Also, if I if I turn around with, if I actually orbit with the camera, you'll see that that is going to stay focused. And even if I move the camera way back, it's still going to be uh, that object. Now let me actually get back into my um, former angle. I like this one actually. Um, now multipass gives you a very, very nice depth of field, but it is slower. Uh, as multipass is just... Um, I don't want to explain it too depth, too in depth, but um, it renders over and over to again. I guess, I guess that's what th I think. That's what th that it's that what I think that it is. What was that? Anyways, um, but it does take more time. The thing is, it looks nicer. It, the depth of field definitely looks nicer. If you got some motion tracking going on, or you're doing I don't know some motion designing, you'll see it. I don't know. Try to um, uh, get an easy scene going on, and then render it out with the pixel blur and render it out with multi-pass but not too too not too too much um you'll see the difference it's it's enormous actually um yeah and that's actually going to be it i'm not going to go over much more 
I could. If you do want actually more of these, if you want, um, if you want to know anything about the cameras, uh, if you want to actually get any other tutorials, just please type it down in the comments below. Um, there's basically anything that I could do for you. Uh, I'm not doing these tutorials for me. I'm doing them for you. So. Uh, support the series, um, like the video if you did enjoy, if this helped you out, even if you're experienced so far, if you get, if you could get the one or another tip from this, a little hint, I'll know this and that, then just leave a like, it's been me, I hope you enjoyed, and I'm out, peace.